Merry Christmas. Yeah, can you believe it? Yeah. Almost here again. This year, once again, is just blown by. Yeah, I mean, crazy. Just this morning, I was thinking, it was not that long ago that it was summer. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and it's flying. So we are so happy to be back with you. We are excited about Christmas time and just wanted to take a minute and talk about your praise letter, which is our bi-monthly newsletter. If you are not signed up for it and would like to be, go to DallasHome.com and just sign up for the praise letter and you will receive it via email. It's a wonderful encouragement. Yeah, we've had so many people through the years. Actually, the other day when I was writing it, I went back and counted up I wonder how many of these I've written through the years. And it was, this latest one, it was number 245, started back in 1981. And we've pretty much kept on schedule every other month for yeah. all those years. There's been a miss here and there, but then I think there are a couple of times we uh, did one back to back in a month. So it, it's, and it. we've covered it pretty well. And so many people through the years have written in and come up at concerts and say, oh, your your newsletter means so yeah. much to us. Yeah, it's like a devotional uh when you read a devotional, at least my experience has been as I go through my various devotionals that I go through every year, how often what you read that day is just what you need that yeah. day. Yeah. You know, and that's been that's been the testimony of the newsletter too. So often yeah. is I just got your newsletter in the mail and it's exactly what I needed. So mm -hmm. if you're not receiving, it's free of charge. Mm -hmm. uh, you can tell them how they get it. I, I don't, yeah, go to DallasHome.com, sign tech. up, <laughs> and we do it via email now, saving on shipping costs, right. and it's just. So much easier. So go there and do that. And since you said devotional, also I want to give a quick plug for the mile markers in the desert devotional. You can order that as well on DallasHome.com. It will direct you to Amazon. That's where you complete your purchase. They will send it to you. It doesn't take very long. It's just a wonderful short devotional that um, can sit on your breakfast table and be part of your life. And sure. honestly, it's um, and I, I was just. I'm going to start incorporating it with our morning because it's so nice and short. Many times with yeah. my kids, I want to do something and it just ends up taking so long that we neglect doing it on a regular basis because we don't have 20, 25 minutes in the morning. But So for those of you who are stressed out in your last minute uh, Christmas shopping yeah. mode, seriously, and, and you know if you've followed our ministry through the years, we do very little to push our own product or, or ask for financial support. Yeah. Uh, it's just not the top of our list to do. We, we just want to minister and God's always met our needs. But I really do want to push this. It's been, again, such a blessing to so many people. We've had people that have bought, uh, have purchased like a dozen of them or uh, yeah. sometimes less groups of them to give. So if you're wondering, what can I give my family and friends? Uh, that would be a really good gift. So yeah. check it out. Stocking stuffers. Yeah. Okay. So the praise letter. Yeah. It was entitled The Last Christmas. Tell us about that. Yeah. The, the thought, you know, every time I write the newsletter, uh, and especially after 245, okay, I've used up a, a lot of information. It's like people had asked me, do you still write songs? And I, well, I'm working on some, but after this many years of songwriting, you've spent a lot of ideas, both mm -hmm. musically and lyrically. Same with writing the newsletter. So I always, I think I pray harder and pray longer and study more. I know I do. And, uh, you know, I ask the Lord, what, what what can I share this time? And that thought just came to mind. Usually in the Christmas season, I always write a, a special praise letter, special mm -hmm. in the sense that it's uniquely specific to the Christmas season, the Christmas story. And again, I, I just kind of zeroed in on the Christmas story. We've talked about the shepherds in the past. We talked about the angels. We've talked about past Christmas memories. How do I approach it this time? What what can we do that's different? And I, and I think really it was it was what's been going on in our yeah. world, especially over in the Middle East and with Israel, the war that broke out there. Uh, I, I just thought, well, what if this were the last Christmas? What if this was it? Because I, I think you'd be foolish or ignorant or blind or all of the above if you assessed what's happening and how it can so suddenly. Uh, it's just like the dominoes are just sitting there. If someone tips one, they're just all going to fall mm -hmm. between China and Iran and Russia and other countries and the Mideast countries that that hate Israel. We've seen a, a rise and just an mm -hmm. unbelievable and, and I would say almost unexplainable rise in anti-Semitism. It's not like people all, the, all of a sudden, because there's a war going on, well, I'm going to be mad at Israel. It, yeah. it was like a... It was like a disease, like a cancer that was yeah. 
lying kind of dormant or hidden, and all of a sudden this conflict exposed right. this Scratched amazing the degree of worldwide hatred and in. It just, it's just an evil. It, it, it really was shocking to see how all of a sudden, literally millions of people just boldly, brazenly, uh, and I understand it's a complicated issue in the Mideast with, with Palestine and then the surrounding countries and Israel. I understand there's a lot of complication to that, but there was no complication understanding and understanding what Hamas did, what this terrorist group right. did to just, in the midst of a ceasefire, suddenly initiate these atrocities on innocent, innocent people. Yeah. So all that to say, that got me thinking, what if this were the last Christmas? Because one Christmas someday will mm -hmm. be the last Christmas. Yes. There will be mm -hmm. no more as time will be no more. And just looking at world events, but even beyond more than just world events, then looking at scripture, yeah. what are the things we should expect? What, what does scripture say the world's going to look like? Uh, as the end approaches, and I don't think anybody could paint a, a clearer picture than what mm -hmm. we're seeing now. You know, there, I was listening to uh, David Jeremiah the other day, who I have great for whom I have great love and respect. A wonderful author, speaker, a minister of the I think it's Shadow Mountain Church in San Diego, and he's been doing a series on the rapture, on end time uh, events, and just talking about you know. People come up to him, and I've had people do this to me too. Aren't you excited, Brother Dallas, about the great end time revival that's going to happen? Aren't you excited that, you know, don't you believe that God's just going to pour out his spirit in a great way at the end of it? And I'm hopeful that he does, but I don't see anything in Scripture that indicates that mm -hmm. he's going to. Um, in fact, Scripture is much more clear on the fact that evil will abound, men will get worse and worse, yeah. the times will become more stressful as the day approaches. Uh, now, he, he pointed out, he being David Jeremiah, which is really interesting, and now after the rapture occurs, there's going to be a great revival. Yeah. <laughs> People's eyes will be opened. <laughs> right. 144,000 yeah. Jewish evangelists, the two witnesses mm -hmm. who uh, do great and mighty works and proclaim the gospel, then they're killed, then they come back to life again. The whole world is going to see this. That'll get their mm -hmm. attention. Revelation tells there's, a, there's an angel that, I don't know, just floats around the air, it sounds like, proclaiming the gospel to yeah. everyone. So yeah. you have this deny. tremendous testimony and presentation of the gospel. But for anyone who would think, you know, oh, well, I guess there's a, another chance. Yes, there is. After the rapture, you don't want to be there. Right. Because, you know, with the mark of the beast and all these things, which I know some of you are going, hey, it's Christmas, lighten up. <laughs> but... That kind of has been the problem, I think, in the church. We've lightened up too much. Yeah. We, I grew up hearing messages all the time about, be ready, be prepared. Yeah. The Lord is coming like a thief in the night, yeah. in the twinkling of an eye, you know, bang, just like that. I don't hear those messages yeah. anymore. Very seldom. There's not an urgency about Christianity, and, and certainly in the American church, the way we conduct ourselves by and large is... We act like, I mean, with the, with the buildings we build and the programs we initiate and the money we spent and mm -hmm. all, nothing wrong with those things, but it almost says, I'm planning on being here a long time. We're right. really heading for this big goal way out there somewhere. And, and I think we kind of miss that. Yeah. Be ready. Look for his coming. It, it could yeah. come. And I, I know there are people who I, I know all the theological uh, differentiating opinions on end time events some people believe that, well, no, the church is going to go through the, uh, the tribulation. This rapture idea is just not biblical. Uh, I happen to believe it is. I think Scripture, uh, I think there's a preponderance of evidence in Scripture, to my satisfaction and many others, that the rapture takes place, the saints are caught up to meet Jesus in the clouds, uh, then the tribulation occurs after that, then the second coming where he returns with the armies, the host of heaven and the saints, uh, and to me, one of the strongest arguments for that is we know that on the cross that God's wrath was poured out upon sin, uh, the substitutionary atoning work, Jesus became sin, took upon himself our sins, and God's wrath was satisfied in that moment. So if, if you are one who believes that, but Christians aren't going to go through the tribulation, that it seems inconsistent with Scripture because the writer of Hebrews says this, that happened on the cross once and for all. It's mm -hmm. finished. Mm -hmm. Oh, but wait a minute. God's wrath is going to be poured out again on, on upon you in the tribulation. That seems inconsistent 
uh, with my understanding of Scripture and many others. I, I have dear friends who see it another way. I have great respect for them, and uh, we'll find out. I remember David Wilkerson, who I ministered with for many years, he used to say, I believe in, because there would be these arguments about uh, pre-trib, mid-trib, post-trib. He said, I believe in we can't lose trib. That's right. Just live for Jesus. Whenever he shows up, you can't lose. You'll be yeah. <laughs> Yeah, he's got it figured out, and he's coming back for us. Whenever that is, <laughs> yeah, we're going to be with him. You know, and in the newsletter we talked about, if if you had a mindset, and I would I would challenge you to think this way, just just begin to think, not not in a depressing, buy your presents, hang up your lights, I'm going to enjoy the season. There's nothing evil or wrong about that. But think, what if this was the last Christmas? Would yeah. these things be the most important things? Right. If this was the last Christmas, man, I'm going to buy the biggest present ever. I'm going to hang up the most lights ever. I'm going to get the tallest tree ever. I don't think so. I, I don't think those things would even matter. So it's just a challenge to prioritize what do, what we say we believe and how we live sometimes don't measure up. So let's yeah. be challenged this Christmas to live as though, and this is how we're supposed to live our lives, live each day as though it's the last day. This is the only guarantee we have is... Yeah today yep. and we don't even have a guarantee of the full day so right. <laughs> live with that in mind this christmas enjoy the season merry christmas to yes. y'all as we say in yes. texas and rejoice that the lord is going to return again yep. and proclaim to shepherds and others up in the heavenlies with the angels as he once did uh, i'm back i'm yeah. here yeah come lord jesus yeah and if you want to read the entire praise letter, you can go on DallasHome.com. It will be posted there as well. Thanks for joining us. Merry Christmas. Thank you.